Next, we had the Dave Middle School Cross Country Runners, led by Coach Will Martin. If you all will come on I'm going to first recognize this young lady, Kaylee Pardue. She finished third in the NGAC uh, championship. Our, in the boys uh, race, uh, boys finished runner-up as a team, but some of the individual recognition includes Tanner Miller. He finished first in the NGAC tournament, along with four first-place finishes on the season. We have Rock Cheney, who finished eighth in the NGAC championship. And we have H. Garmany, who finished ninth in the NGAC, NGAC championship. So congratulations to you all. <laughs> Good, have a few words? Thank you, Mr. Engel, thank you, board. Uh, I've got a few words and we actually want to surprise somebody with something. I covered a lot of it, so I want to um, read all of this, but I do want to give a shout out to all the members of our team and for all their hard work. Uh, we did finish as the runner-up, and I want to add that we were only runner-up by four points, and it was very close as we all held our breath, but I'm so proud of their work. This season we were carried by the precision of Tanner Miller, pushed by the determination of H. Garmany, and encouraged by the persistence of Nate Hurst. The optimism of Rock Cheney carried us. Levi Dupree was the model of improvement, and Connor Sharp demonstrated the unrelenting power of the male ponytail. <laughs> Ryan Morris and Cash Christensen were consistent warriors. Joseph Kane battled the clock all season and never gave up. Cruz Page was an absolute beast. Zach Zeller kept moving the mark forward. Zach Lesavoy showed us what hard work can do. And Liam Davidson proved to be lightning in a bottle. And our new batch of Wolverines, Hayden Dunn, Trevor Gross, Peyton Harris, Wyatt Hurst, and Grayson Stennett showed us all that rookies cannot be counted out as they worked hard all season. But we actually have an award that we would like to give tonight. This actually came from... Uh, the boys and well from all of the runners as well and uh, we would like to I think a very special Wolverine who made our season a success this gentleman drove our bus to our away meets and set an example for all of us about what a Wolverine is he carried coolers he carried tables he carried the tent he managed drinks several times um, he absolutely went above and beyond, and I know this because I've talked to several of the other coaches, and, he, uh, and they had similar experiences with him. He is a testament to what one incredible person can do and what a difference they can make. So we would like to present our award, the 2021 Wolverine Excellence Award, to the incredible Mr. Gary Frisky. These next awards are some individual awards for uh, the DMS All NGAC Honors for football, softball, and volleyball. So for the football team, we have Levi Rains and Mason Weathers finish the season with All NGAC Honors. So if Levi and Mason, uh, y'all will come forward. Middle School Softball Team with Raleigh Byram, Lexi Lawson, and Maddie Page finish the season with all NGAC honors. <laughs> and 
And then our day middle school volleyball team, we have Katie Stone and Josie Daniels finish the season with all NGAC honors. Now on to, on to our high school awards. We have the Dade County High School One Act Play, led by Miss Jessica w uh, Wilson. This year they had a third place finish in region competition, which was the highest overall rating in about 15 years. Including in that, we had Jen C. Matthews and Jeremy Crane, who were also selected as part of the all-star cast. So uh, Jessica, if you and your crew would come down. Jessica, would you like to share a few words about your theater students? Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having us tonight and recognizing us. Uh, it's, it's really special that we're actually in this room being recognized since all of our stories take place right back there. I remember walking into this room 11 years ago now. I can't believe it's been that long. Uh, and just so excited to share stories with Dade County and to direct students here and to create theater. Uh, my whole life, all I ever really wanted to do was make theater and I get to make it every day with these amazing kids. Uh, and this year, our third place win was a really big win for us. We scored a 96 and first place scored a 98. So we were within two points of scoring top lane. So I'm getting flustered. I just want to tell these guys, I love them so, I'll get emotional. I love them so much and Every day I get to come to class and we get to make art together. Um, and I will also enthusiastically and shamelessly plug our next two shows. Uh, the first one is happening tomorrow night. It is the middle school Christmas play, Keep the Home Fires Burning. And if you loved Adelina Duran singing the national anthem, you will love her as the Spitfire Mother Kind Lady. She'll be playing that tomorrow night. And then we have uh, the Adams Valley Musical coming up in the spring. So thank you all so much for your support and keep coming out to shows and supporting Dade County Theater. The one cool thing about what Miss Jessica does is she she splits part of her time at Dade Middle School and then she's part uh, half time here. So she gets those kids when they're as early as sixth grade and watches them progress and grow through the drama class uh, at Dade Middle and then when they get here to the high school. So she gets them at an early age. So. Seven years, some of them. All right, on to our D Dade County High School volleyball team, coached by Miss Carrie Morris and Tammy Steve uh, Stevens. Uh, they advanced to the GHSA Elite Eight state playoffs this year. So, Miss Carrie Morris, if you will come forward. So this is a very young team. Uh, so the, they have the one they set the bar high. So hopefully next year can take it on up another step. Miss Carrie, would you like to say a few words about your team? Yes, yes I would. <laughs> Hello, my name is Carrie Morris. I'm the head coach of the Dade County High School volleyball team. have risen to the challenges every year that we've had them. Um, it is no surprise that the last two years have been extremely challenging in sports, period. Um, but they have grown up as far as maturing, taking care of themselves, taking care of others. And it never ceases to amaze us how they rise to each challenge, whether it's in the classroom or on the court. Um, and they have set the bar high for DCHS volleyball. And we are so proud of them and everything they've accomplished. <laughs> now on to our competition cheerleading, uh, led by Coach Josh Hurst, Miss Becky Goff, and Molly Rogers. Our competition cheerleading squad had several first place finishes throughout the year. 
they advance to the GHSA Sweet 16 and then come away with an overall 10th place finish. So congratulations to the Dade County High School College of the And I know Coach Hurst will have a few words to say about your girls. All right, so I was back there typing in my notes app because I didn't want to follow Will after that amazing speech. Uh, but, yeah, we did, a, we did a great job this year. We had a great group of girls, uh, a ton of athletes up here, um, and we, we did, like Mr. Engel said, we, we finished the most um, first place uh, results that we've had in, since I've been coaching. Um, we finished the best at region that we've done. We actually finished third in our region, or second in our region. We thought we had it, we thought we had first, but you know the judges didn't think so that day. Uh, and then we ended up getting to go to state and made the Sweet 16, got to compete. Um, and if you ask anybody that was there, which we had a, a bunch of people that are in this room down in Macon and, and watching us, and uh, a lot of people that are in this room watching us here at school, um, we did really well. Uh, we did really, really good. I think the best performance of our year. Uh, but, you know, unfortunately, the judges didn't think so. So we, we ended up 10th, which is honestly the highest that we finished since in my seven years of coaching. So um, congratulations to these ladies. We're actually not like uh, the volleyball team. We're a very old team. Um, we have seven girls that will be departing from us this year, So, which is going to be super, super sad because they've been here through it all. Um, and helped build this program, and it's it's going to be hard to replace some of them. Um, but hopefully, some of the the younger girls sitting back there are paying attention and will be joining us in the next few years. So, congratulations, ladies! Y'all did amazing, and I'm super proud of you. Next, we have the Dade County High School boys cross country team led by Coach Philip Bell. The cross country team finished third place uh, in the region and qualified for state and it is painful seeing them run across the campus in August and September when it's brutally hot and humid. They run by me as I'm, sometimes as I'm leaving. They say, Mr. Engel, you want to join us? No, thank you. But I have so much respect and admire what they do. They keep plugging. So, Mr. Bell, do you have any words you'd like to share? Just a few. Um, and I'm not a man of few words, but I will be tonight. Um, these kids, they, uh, they pound the miles out. That's one thing uh, we jokingly refer to cross country as the sport that every other sport uses as punishment. And uh, these kids uh, are involved in a grueling uh, discipline. That's all it is, is a discipline. And these kids show their heart. They show um, just their mental toughness with what they do. And uh, I was told that uh, before last year, it had been 23 years since Dade County had had a team in cross country go to state and now they've done it two years in a row and thanks to the excellent work that coach Martin is doing in the middle school and all of our middle school uh, personnel those kids that are coming up even though we have four graduating seniors this year with the crop of eighth graders coming into our high school next year we're gonna go for a three-peat so uh, we're just uh, so proud of our kids I love these kids um, yeah, I'm going to try to run with them again this year. It's been a while, but uh, uh, they're an inspiration to me. And so all the moms and dads, grandparents out there, you've got uh, the cream of the crop here with Day County with our cross-country kids. So um, I'm just so proud of them. And so thank you so much for all you all support. Next, we have our Dade County High School football team who finished region runner-up.
This group of young men, they hosted the first round of the GHSA state playoffs. And they also defeated South Pittsburgh, South Pittsburgh, who just recently won the state title in Tennessee. So congratulations to our Day County Wolverine football team. And I know Coach Poston has a few words he would like to share about these young men. There's two young ladies too. I had the, I wrote a, sorry. Yeah, I wrote a speech and Will stole it and uh, <laughs> used it for the cross country team. So I had a whole lot of adjectives to put beside each kid's name, but uh, he took that away from me. Uh, no, but seriously, uh, we challenged them from uh, from the get go. I guess kind of started last year to uh, not be afraid of anyone and to realize that Day County kids don't have to be second to anyone. Um, and we came within four four points of accomplishing our goal. Um, just a couple plays short of being region champions. Feel like we were the better team. Um, but I feel like these kids turned our football program around and uh, had a couple big name schools come in here that everybody in the community said that we couldn't beat and uh, sent them home uh, very upset. So we want a we want a Tennessee state championship banner. Um, you know, it could be like a Coca-Cola sign with Sharpie. We don't care. But, um, and then as far as, you know, like the Tremier girls, I saw them play soccer last year, and uh, they kicked one. Last year we couldn't make an extra point to save our lives. So I uh, saw them play soccer, and they, uh, one of them kicked the ball from about the 30-yard line through the upright soccer ball, and I thought, okay, that'll, that'll work. And uh, they agreed to come out and kick for us, and to put it in perspective, we beat South Pittsburgh by five points, and Caroline kicked two field goals. So they were a big part of our Congratulations to the Wolverine football team. Softball. All right, unfortunately, uh, our softball team couldn't be here tonight due to some COVID-19 uh, uh, protocols. Uh, so we will get them on the next go around. That concludes our student recognition. All of you are welcome to stay and listen to the business of the board, or if you would like to be dismissed at this time, you can certainly do that as well.
Jane Jewell's uh, fund, their monthly financial for the month ending November the 30th, 2021. And as you can see, we're at 41.66% of the fiscal year being completed. Does, does everyone, do y'all have it in front of you? Yeah. Hey, Dan, can you turn that mic off right there? It's what's ringing so loud. No, no, it's just ringing. Right there. It's like maybe Doc, maybe Josh is up there. fiscal year 2022, and we collected $838,441.71. In fiscal year 21, Avaloran taxes came in at $962,960.67. So we collected $124,518.90 less in fiscal year 22. And you know, that doesn't mean a lot. Next month, we may get a lot more coming in. On the next line, you will see our TABT tax collections. For November the 22nd, we collected $58,481.74. For fiscal year 21, TABT taxes came in at $68,720.09. <coughs> They were down by $10,238.35. The next little paragraph is FLOSS 5. Uh, our ending balance for October 2021 was $2,740,800.28. The interest for November was $355.51. We have outstanding checks totaling $9,974.12. Issued checks that cleared the bank for November was $199,320.60. Leaving our SPLOS 5 ending balance for November the 30th, 2021 at $2,787,179.86. The last little column on here was their SPOS collections for the past three years. And in fiscal year 20, we collected $225,281.48. Fiscal year 21, we collected $219,420.45. In fiscal year 22, we collected $255,318.79. And if you look at the last column, you can see uh, collections in our plus five was up by $35,898.34. Okay, if you'll go on over to financial for the general fund. Once again, you can see that, that we are at 41.66% of the fiscal year being complete. The second column is the revenue that we have, we have collected year to date. That is $7,227,405.96. Our collections are coming in a little bit low. Uh, the, percent, the percentage is 36, 36.59. The next section is their expenditures, the second column again. And from July 1, 2021 to November the 30th, we have expended 8,126,529.66. And we're over budget just a little bit. And like I tell you every month, that's because of the one-time expenditures that come in, like the insurance, uh, transportation, property, and all of that. The last column is um, general fund equity 2021. Our ending balance for June 30th, 2021 
was four million four hundred five thousand four sixty three ninety four. Total revenue was seven million two hundred twenty seven thousand four zero five ninety seven. Total expenditures year to date was eight million one hundred twenty six thousand five twenty nine sixty six leaving their ending balance for November the 30th, 2021, in the general fund at uh, 3506340 dollars And the next page is what uh, Mr. Engel had asked me to fix for you guys. If the first column is how much we've expended for the month of November, broken down by facility. In November, we expended $194,141.56. The second column is the year to date, and that's, um, that total is $9,263,447.01. And we will get one, maybe two more checks since plus five, and then we will open uh, Plus six. Mr. Engel has had me to go on and open the account, so we have it all ready to go, and it will be the end of January or the first of February that we will start plus six. The last page is our current construction and progress report. Our contractor is PNC Construction, and this is for the Dade County Middle School Gym Improvement. Um, we have paid our second application in November. That was 173,356.11, leaving our ending balance for this project at 494,326.61. And all the documentation that follows this is on uh, e board. So if you ever have any questions, just feel free to call me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next item on uh, the consent agenda is copy paper bid. I recommend the board approve the lowest bid for copy paper to American Paper and Twine in the amount of $34.90 for 440 cases. Fundraiser request. I recommend the board approve the fundraiser request that are not highlighted in yellow. The ones that are highlighted in yellow are information items only. If they're through a booster club or some other uh, PTO, some other organization. Those are information items only. So that does not require uh, board approval. Only the one, only the non-highlighted fundraisers. Yes, this will take us through the remainder of the year. Unless there's some uh, emer like emergency situation where one of our CTA clubs ends up going to nationals or something like that, we need. But for the most part, this will take us through the end of the year. <coughs> Next one is school calendar for 22, 2022 through 2023. All right, back in early uh, November, uh, we sent out uh, three options for a calendar, school calendar, um, and we had over 130 responses back. And option number one uh, was the clear choice. It was like 62%. Um, so we took that data and we pulled uh, the principals 
and uh, the four teachers of the year together because there was some feedback uh, on all of the different options. Um, but uh, long, uh, long story short, um, uh, the, uh, the option we, uh, that we chose or that's being recommended is option number one, but uh, the uh, teachers of the year and the principals indicated that on fall break um, in October, uh, the, the students would have a three-day fall break, uh, the teachers would have a two-day two fall break and come back on a Wednesday, and then that Wednesday they could schedule time for parent-teacher conferences. So we get that information out ahead of time, and then during that in-service day they could schedule uh, parent-teacher conferences. That way uh, students don't have to be released a half day early. Teachers are already going to be here, so go ahead and schedule those ahead of time. And then, um, originally, uh, on February the 17th, uh, we had an in-service day, and uh, uh, the, the group recommended take uh, on February the 17th, right before President's Day on February the 20th, so the group maybe recommended moving that uh, in-service day from February the 17th to March the 10th. And that's right around the same time that the third nine-week grading period ends. So teachers could wrap up their grades, students would be out, and they could be in entering grades to wrap up that uh, third nine-week grading period. But it's very much similar to uh, the calendar that we had this year where uh, the last day in July, uh, our veteran teachers can use that uh, as a flex day where they can come in sometime uh, mid-July and work in place of July 29th. Then our countywide kickoff would be uh, August the 1st with students reporting on Friday, August the 5th of 2022. And then students' last day would be May 24th of 2023 with two in-service days. Uh, that May 24th is on a Wednesday, have two in-service days, and then no one would return after uh, Memorial Day. Okay, the next one is VCHS Chorus Disney Overnight Trip. All right, the Dade County High School Chorus uh, just received word uh, last week that they have been invited uh, to sing at Disney. Uh, they received that notification Monday morning on December the 6th, and the plan is that uh, students would leave Thursday April the 7th, and this is going into spring break, the way that spring break falls. So students would leave on Thursday, April the 7th, arrive in Orlando uh, the night before their performance on Friday, April the 8th, and then they would get to explore the, uh, the parks on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and then students would be returning on Monday, April the 11th, which is the beginning of our uh, spring break. And it has been communicated that chaperones uh, will need to have uh, a background check to fulfill the, our Day County Schools procedures. Yeah, most of the parents are planning on going anyway, right. and anybody who's in charge of other kids will will get the background check on. Them. Gotcha. Any opportunity to go to Disney? Just Just, is, is there a policy about uh, sleeping arrangements like is it kids in a room and you know do we have any sort of policy around that I'm sorry I didn't hear around for, for overnight trips kids, in the room as around adult. Uh, kids won't be in the rooms with chaperones they won't. 
Okay. The only kids Unless it's with their parents. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. great. Thank you. Okay. Any more questions on that one? Okay. If there's none, that's all of the consent agenda discussion. And we move to public input. Is there any public input? There is no public input. So we, we will move to the consent agenda consideration and we will look at items one monthly general fund reports, two copy paper bid, three fundraiser reports for the school calendar for 2022-23, and DCHS Chorus Disney overnight trip. Do I hear a motion to approve that consent agenda? Second. Okay, first Daniel and second Johnny. Everyone in favor? That's everything. Okay, next is personnel report. All right, I recommend the board approve the personnel report as presented. Okay. Do I hear a motion to accept that personnel report? I make a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. All right, all in favor? Okay, that is everyone. Next, there being no further business, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Make that motion too. I'll second that motion. All right. First and second by Daniel. Second by Johnny. Everyone, all in favor? That's everyone. Okay. We are complete with our meeting. Before you leave, there's a brown paper bag behind you that you all need to take with you.